time for O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson. Promo Colorado. O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson is presented each week by CBA. It's just a better gun. Hello again, everyone. I'm O'Neill Williams, and welcome to our program. Now, this is a show like you've never seen. My guest is Charlie Kilmaster. He's a wildlife biologist with the Department of Natural Resources in Georgia. And we're talking about hogs. Do you have hogs on your property? What do you do about it? Do you have too many? Do you want more? No, you don't. But what do you do about the fact that this critter, who doesn't belong here, unless you do something about it, he'll take over? So if you want to know about that, whether you have a little piece of property or a whole lot, you stay today and watch O'Neill Outside with Charlie Kilmaster today, and it'll be worthwhile, I promise. Charlie has poor little O'Neill down here in the hot sun, but you're going to tell me all about what today? We're going to talk about hogs, mm -hmm. hog control, uh, how hogs are bad for wildlife, how they're bad for agriculture, and why we should hate them. Okay, that's a good idea. All right, well, if I'm a leaseholder or own some deer property, what do I care? Why shouldn't I? They're, they're a game animal, aren't they? No, they're not a game animal. They're a non-native invasive species in our state. They cause damage to your habitat. They compete with wildlife, and in some cases, they might actually eat your wildlife. They'll predate Ooh. nests, turkey nests, quail nests. Um, they eat uh, amphibians and uh, lizards and all yeah. kinds of stuff. Well, we don't want them around. No. So we need to educate this guy right here who might be saying, oh, man got hogs over there we'll shoot them no you don't want them you might think you want them if you don't have them but i can promise you you don't okay you'll find out all about that today on o'neill outside o'neill outside with travis johnson brought to you by toyota visit your local toyota dealers or go to toyota.com today no matter your destination toyota goes with you let's go places bill jordan's real tree family, friends, and the outdoors. The Whitetail Institute of North America. Research equals results. And by Tough Shed, premier builder of sheds and garages. For people that aren't familiar with this, it's like you are and I'm being educated. Is this a big deal? Is this a big problem? It's a multi-billion dollar issue just for agriculture, not to mention all the indirect things that aren't necessarily quantified when we look at the damage that hogs cause in our country. Okay, for instance, this is an 8,000 WMA tract. An 8,000 acre wildlife management area, mm -hmm. Dylane Plantation. Okay, and you reach out way beyond that. That's right. Well, that's one of the ways that we're controlling pigs is we're forming landowner cooperatives. So we've amassed a total of about 40,000 acres on this property and surrounding private lands doing a public-private cooperative effort to control pigs. And it really takes a big land base like that to effectively control a population. So it's a big problem here, and it's a big problem where? All over the southeast and growing uh, the further north that you reach out of the southeast, it's an emerging problem in other areas. How did those critters get here anyway? Well, they got over here in the entire country originally with, the, with European settlers uh, almost 500 years ago. And they weren't really a problem until maybe 40 years ago when people took an interest in hunting them and then began to stock them all over the country as, as a new animal to hunt. 
So they really get a lot of places at 65 miles an hour in the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. I'll bet they do, which is illegal in most places. Yes, illegal in a lot of places. We have really cracked down on that in our state with some new regulations, and a lot of other states have really uh, taken a strong stance against the transport of live feral pigs. Okay, I hope people are paying attention. Give me an example of the damage that a hog population can do on a place like this. Well, let's take our wheat fields, for example. We plant some dove fields and wheat and a number of other crops, but they come in and they can trample it down. They consume the grain. They cause a lot of grain to be left on the ground and uh, rot before it becomes useful mm -hmm. to the wildlife that we want to have it. And we also get a lot of noxious weeds that come in in that trampled ground. They get taken oh. over when that, uh, when that grain is pushed out. It allows the noxious weeds to grow up where they've been. Right. Here's an example of agricultural crop damage just a couple of miles from Dye Lane. This cornfield is more than 150 acres in size, but the hogs have found it. They move in at night, they trample the stalks to eat the corn. Often, they begin their damage toward the center of the field, so the landowner may not even know they're there. It will be two more months before this field is ready for harvest, and in that amount of time, the hogs can essentially wipe out the entire crop. That's costly for the farmer and costly for all of us too as consumers. For guys that have property and they have hogs, why don't I just shoot them and we, we'll just hunt them at night? Can I control the population that way? Not really. You know, at the statewide level or even a regional level, hunter harvest is not really insignificant. It does help kind of stall population growth. But when you're talking a local area where you're trying to really put a dent in them, you really need to look at a very efficient means. If you shoot a bunch of pigs in a field, maybe a sounder of 12 or 15 pigs, uh, you might get three or four if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. But with these traps like we're using now, these whole sounder, uh, large corral traps that are remotely triggered, we wait until that entire group is in there, and then we drop the gate, and we wipe out the entire group. We don't leave a single educated pig out there on the landscape. And they will learn, won't they? They will. They'll learn to, to avoid those traps in the future, and then those offspring from those pigs can may learn to avoid those traps as well. Yeah, this is a smart guy, isn't he? It's, uh, they're incredibly smart animals. And if any of them are left, do they replace themselves quickly? Yes, they have one of the highest reproductive rates of any mammal that size in the world. So we've bred these animals for thousands of years in domestication to have high productivity rates. And now those animals have gone feral, been released out onto the landscape, and they maintain those high reproductive rates that far exceed their wild ancestors. Okay. If you don't have hogs, he doesn't want hogs. No. Well, if you get them, you're almost never going to get rid of them. We've seen that in the southeast. They've been here for nearly 500 years, and we can control pigs. Uh, we can do a lot more work, but I don't think we'll ever get rid of them. If you don't have them in your state, you don't want them. Okay. And lastly then, too, if you have them, this is a constant thing, isn't it? Trapping is a process, not an event. Ooh, well, didn't that sound good? We've talked about the damage that uh, the sounders can be on a place like this, mm -hmm. but if you hunt them and kill them or they're in a trap, are there health issues to handling hogs? Yes, hogs carry a number of diseases that are infectious to humans that you really got to be mindful of. Brucellosis is at the top of the list. It's a very bad human pathogen. So if you kill a pig, whether it be in a trap or you're out hunting, Always wear gloves. It's even best to wear eye protection when you're cleaning a hog. Be careful around the reproductive organs. And if you do cut yourself while you're cleaning a hog, go ahead and go to the doctor and get on antibiotics in advance no of getting sick. Well, I've seen the in uh, the magazines, I've seen the gloves that go all the way up. All right. yeah. The main... Uh, you, you want to minimize the, any contact between your, any bodily fluids from the pig and your skin. Uh, I don't go that far. Some people do, mm -hmm. but uh, you main, mainly want to protect any, any open sores that might get some fluid from the pig in it. Got any sores? Pay attention. <laughs> I couldn't help. Got a great little tidbit to point you to. I hope you're going to enjoy it. It's called the Audience Appreciation Event. We wouldn't be on the air without you guys. It's a whole long laundry list of 25 cooperative sponsors whereby you can be in a contest or drawing in which to win some great merchandise. You can go to the website, to Facebook, the YouTube channel, 
subscription to the newsletter, all kinds of ways. Would you like to be a part of it? Well, you can be, hundreds of thousands of you. It's a favor, if you will, for watching the program from our sponsors. This portion of O'Neill Outside is presented by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources Wildlife Resources Division and Georgia State Parks and Historic Sites. I gotta tell you, after chatting with you, seeing this work, this seems awfully easy, but you said they were really smart. Do we put bait out here and get hogs in here tonight? <laughs> No, it doesn't work that easy. Uh, you really have to plan well in advance, do a lot of monitoring with trail cameras, figure out where pigs are, and then establish your bait sites where the pigs are coming. And you can't just put this trap up. Sometimes if you just put this whole trap up, they'll disappear. Sometimes we may have to come and put one or two panels up at a time and get them accustomed really? to setting that up. And once, once you build that trap, and then you gotta get them comfortable going in the trap, so we're talking about a long-term process, depending on how skittish those pigs are. Gosh, if you tried to hunt that sounder, you'd never get it done. Well, you can imagine, like you get all this work, you get the hogs almost all going in the trap, and then you get a hunter that comes along and shoots one of them. They've messed up some potentially weeks of work that you've done conditioning those pigs to that okay. trap. Okay, so this is the way to go in a concentrated area if you want to affect the population of the pig, the pigs is a sounder, is a family of pigs. That's right. right? And so you, with that in mind then, do this and don't mix those two. It's just not gonna work. Right, right. you can have hunting on the same property, just not at the same time as we have our trapping efforts going on. A guy's watching this, listening to us right here, and he's got a 50 acre deer lease, and he's spent a lot of money and time on a food plot, and the hogs are coming in. He can't shoot them, he can't be effective. What does he do? Well, you know, one, one option is to start working with neighboring property owners. Each of you build a corral trap like this, and then you all chip it together and buy one of these higher tech gates, and then you rotate it around because you really need to affect a much larger acreage if you wanna, if you wanna have any semblance of control. So if there's five or six guys, or clubs, okay, that have 500 acres, they need to get together on this thing and have one of these traps. They can't shoot and affect this population, can they? No, not efficiently enough to, to really reduce the population. There are times when shooting is more appropriate when, when they're not responding to bait, mm -hmm. when, when it's hazing them off of an area, but at times when they're responding to bait, trapping is the most effective way okay. to do it. Well, tell me about what this trap does. Well, uh, it's a little bit smaller than the other trap that we looked at, but it's an excellent system in that there's no visual obstruction under here for, uh, to maybe scare pigs off. They can see right through the trap, mm -hmm. and so it's not, uh, sometimes they respond a little bit quicker to it, but it's a, it's a great system that, that drops down once you trigger it. But now when you get a whole group of pigs in here, a whole sounder, our, our cameras over here are gonna signal that our uh, technician gets a text message and then we can drop the trap on the spot and then come in before daylight and kill those pigs. Okay, so you got it baited. So we'll find out tonight or early in the morning and we may have hogs in this trap. Let's hope so. Mm -hmm. Where are we now and what's going on here? So right now we're on a neighboring property with the, the cooperative with Dylan WMA. The wildlife management area is just through the, through just the woods. Just over, over the hill there? That's right, yeah, okay. that's right. And we are in a Bermuda grass hay field. Uh, this farmer was sustaining some damage. It looks like you ran through here with a plow in some of these areas. You can tell. That's right, so what we did was we started baiting where the pig activity already was, and then we started building this trap a few panels at a time to get them used to it. And then we've got the back of the trap open right now. We're gonna close that today and leave nothing but the triggered gate on the front for the pigs to go through and hopefully we'll get the whole entire sounder to come in. Okay, to everybody's benefit. That's right. It's a collaborative effort, public and private land working together to solve a problem. This tip of the week is about the number one thing that fouls you up in deer hunting to get the herd buck. Scent. What do you do about that? Here are a couple of suggestions. Number one, use the scent covers sparingly. I can't prove it, but I'll bet you deep into the season, the big buck, the herd buck, the buck, 
becomes accustomed to these overpowering scents that he now smells in the woods. Number two, so you go and you have breakfast. You have eggs and bacon. It's a pleasant little place. You have, maybe even have some sausage and jelly on your toast or biscuits. Then you wear that same outfit when you sit in the truck, when you stop and buy gas, and then you wear that same outfit when you get out of the truck and go to the deer stand. I swear I just don't see any deer here anymore. I wonder why. Here's the perfect clothing arrangement. Put your outfit in a vacuum bag, in a closable bag. Change that when you get to the stand and put those clothes in the bag. Cover your scent, work the wind, and be more successful in your deer hunts. I promise it works. We have more from O'Neill and Travis, but first, let's thank these sponsors. Arctic Ice, no hassle, no mess, colder than the rest. Year One, your source for muscle car parts. The Furminator, best food plot implement on earth. And by O'Neill's Real Gun and Marine Oils, naturally the best. Let's join O'Neill for some flavorful cooking with Swaggerty's Farm Sausage. We're cooking with Swaggerty's. What a surprise. Well, there is a surprise with this recipe. Now listen to all this. We're making or cooking brownies. Not the kind of brownies that a lot of you guys use, but that's okay. Let me tell you how we did this. We boiled some raisins, plumped them up, and I've kept part of the liquid where we browned, pardon me, that we plumped up the raisins. Now I'm adding to that brown sugar. I'm adding to that, here's one of the surprises besides the raisins. Next is walnuts. Sounds like a great little recipe for brownies, doesn't it? Let me get this started for a minute. All right, now cinnamon, baking powder, Soda, baking soda, all right. More stirring, a lot of stirring involved here. It sounds good so far, doesn't it? Brownies, walnuts, raisins, yes it does. Brown sugar, now here is the surprise. Swaggery's Farm Premium Roll Sausage. It was one pound, a one pound roll, and I crumbled it up and I browned it in a pan. More mixing. Sausage and, yeah, you gotta trust me here, this is really, this is fabulous. And then finally, flour. And when this is all mixed together, I cooked it, I'll cook it in the oven at 350 for some undetermined amount of time, I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> but it really is fabulous. And the addition of the sausage really makes it special. Uh, don't I have somebody else usually to clean up, so. Now this is only a half hour show, so the mixing does take a long, long time. That's the way it looks. It doesn't look so good, does it? Well, it is. Mm-hmm. 350, 45 minutes. And this is a treat, and I've got a, you've You've got to promise me now, you've got to give this a try with Swaggerty's Premium Roll Sausage and Brownies. Mm hmm Swaggerty's Sausage Brownies with brown sugar and caramel icing. You promised me you've got to do this one now. Swaggerty's.com. Recipes, O'NeillOutside.com. This is a case study on hog management. So give me a little history, back up a few years, how many, when did you begin, and what's the effect? Okay, so uh, talking with our local staff here, back in 2011, there really wasn't much of a hog population here to speak of. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to 2015, we've got a population that's out of control. So that's how fast it can grow. And in 2015, we really made a concerted effort. We started forming the cooperative of landowners around. We started actively 
trapping with these whole sounder traps. In the last couple of years, we brought in aerial gunning, and since that time, we've taken off several thousand pigs just off of this focal area. After this period of time, several years, what's the result? What are you seeing now? Well, now you kind of go out and have to hunt for hog damage now. The surrounding farmers don't have near the damage that they have sustained in the past, so um, it, it really has reduced the, the damage overall. So you can be effective with a program like this. Yes, but it takes high efficiency and a lot of effort. If you hadn't done that and cooperated with the other landowners and hadn't done all those things, this would be work, this place would be, well, I would say worthless, but no, not quite, but my goodness. Well, you know, we have 8,000 acres here, and so if you aren't able to affect a larger land base, it's much harder because you get influx of pigs from surrounding properties, and that's why forming these large cooperatives are so imperative to actually gaining long-term control of our population. Well, what did you learn today as a land owner, whether it's a lease or your property? Do you have hogs there? I know you don't want them there. Can you shoot them? We found out, no, you can't. It's a concerted effort with you and your neighbors as far as you can reach to be able to trap them. That's what you have to do. That's what works. And you saw it today on O'Neill Outside, and you can rewind if you like, because this is the worthwhile program of the season.